Good evening. You're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has happened across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell and these are the headlines that we're tracking this evening. Under pressure from lakhs of salaried employees, uh, the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley announces rollback of the budget proposal to tax employees' provident fund. On International Women's Day, women MPs seek equal opportunities. Congress President Sonia Gandhi asked government to pass women's resolution bill. India to get its first women fighter pilot on the 18th of June, all three trainees to get commissioned on the same day. President Pranam Mukherjee to skip World Culture Festival, court hearing to decide fate of three-day event planned by Sri Sri Ravi Shankar's Art of Living Foundation tomorrow. I have let the sport down, says tennis legend Maria Sharapova after testing positive for banned drug meldonium, a Nike suspense contract with the richest female spokesperson. A top story this evening, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley today announced the rollback of the proposed tax on withdrawals from the Employees Provident Fund. He said that in view of representations he had received, the government will like to do a comprehensive review of the proposal. Leaders across political parties welcomed the decision. The government on Tuesday withdrew its budget proposal to tax pension fund withdrawals. Arun Jaitley ji. Madam, I rise to lay on the table of the House the papers mentioned at serial number 3 against my name in today's revised list of... Finance papers. Minister Arun Jaitley told Parliament that the government will pursue other suggestions that can achieve the same objective. There are various other suggestions received which can also uh, achieve the same policy objective of encouraging people to join the pension scheme. In view of the representations received, the government would like to do a comprehensive review of, the, of this proposal and therefore I withdraw the proposal in paragraph 138 and 139 of my budget speech. The proposal of 40% exemption given to NPS subscribers at the time of withdrawal remains. On February 29th, Jaitley proposed taxing lump sum withdrawals exceeding 40% of the employee's provident fund unless the sum was reinvested in a pension product like an annuity. This immediately triggered a protest by salaried workers, although Jaitley did clarify that the intention was to make people invest properly in pension plans. कि हमारी सरकार जो है वो लोगों की बात सुनती है लोगों से सुझाव लेती है हम लोगों ने उसमें परिवर्तन ले आए हैं पीएफ जो था वैसे ही है जैसे पहले भी था और एनपीएस को हम लोगों ने और बेहतर बना दिया है और हम लोगों की सोच ये है और भरोसा भी ये है कि इससे और लोग रिटायरमेंट के लिए बचत करेंगे और अपने को रिटायरमेंट के समय सुरक्षित महसूस करें Jaitley's statement was marked by a show of jubilation in the House as lawmakers thumped their desks in appreciation. At present, withdrawal from the EPF is entirely tax-free, while withdrawal from the NPS is fully taxable. Whenever somebody is being uh, oppressed wrongly or acted against wrongly uh, or victimized, I tend to try and help those people. So yes, I felt, I felt salary, salaried people... Uh, Middle class people were being hurt by the government, and so I decided to put some pressure on the government. And I'm very happy that uh, they've got some relief. Bharatiya Janata Party is ka swagat karti hai, because APF par jo tax lagaya tha ek varg tha jisme kahan kahan logon mein narajgi thi, aur because ye budget jo aaya hai Kendra Sarkar ka, Modi ji ka ye budget aam jan ka budget hai, common man ka budget hai, aur गरीब आदमी का बजट है, गरीब किसान का बजट है, नौजवान का बजट है, और उसमें कहने के इस ईपीएफ पर टैक्स को लेकर एक वर्ग में आराजगी थी। Jaitley's pension tax plan had sparked protests by the Congress and other parties. More than one lakh people signed a petition urging rollback of the proposal. The original proposal included restricting EPF contributions from April. शुरू से आखिर तक ये सरकार जो कर रही है जिसके बारे में हमारे पार्टी के महासचिव बोल चुके हैं कि ये जुमला नॉमिक्स है जब जो लगता है कि जुमला काम कर जाएगा वो ही बोल देते हैं The EPF invests 95% of its nearly 68100 billion rupees corpus in state and corporate bonds It plans a return of 8.8% on investments this year 
ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट राज्यसभा टीवी Now speaking on the occasion of International Women's Day in Lok Sabha Congress President Sonia Gandhi urged the house to pass the women's reservation bill saying that women must get their due several other women MPs also spoke about the role of women in nation building concerns over discrimination were also raised Women MPs from all political parties put forth their views in Lok Sabha on the occasion of International Women's Day. Congress President Sonia Gandhi used the opportunity to hit out at the government. She said that good governance was not about having a vindictive feeling but also about accepting critical views. Sonia Gandhi was also critical of a minimum education level for panchayat polls in some states. She also demanded that the women's reservation bill be passed soon. Maximum governance also means giving us women our legitimate due namely the long awaited women's reservation bill and i believe i believe we can expect a new madam speaker a strong ally in this cause Women MPs from other parties too pitched in with their views many of them expressed concern over the discrimination women face in society and even within their homes every girl should be allowed to dream big like every boy so that she can become an achiever in her own right we should create a balance between male and female give equal opportunities instead of suppressing women इसके लिए इनकम ही एक है जिसमें आप इक्वल बन सकते हैं उसके लिए एडुकेशन जरूरी है जब तक हम लोग एडुकेशन नहीं देंगे तब तक इनकम भी नहीं होंगे तब तक हम इक्वल भी नहीं बन पाएंगे अदर देन पॉलिटिकल एंगल अदर देन रिजर्वेशन महिलाएं आज बहुत सारे मुश्किल में हैं मेनली मुझे लगता है अगर पॉवर्टी के ऊपर इलिटरेसी के ऊपर हम जो चुन के आए हैं हम लोग फोकस कर सकते हैं तो हमारे देश के महिलाएं ऊपर उठ सकती है ब्राइट ट्रैफिकिंग इज द अल्टीमेट डी ह्यूमनाइजेशन ऑफ वुमेन मैडम आई होप वील बी एबल टू गिव जस्टिस टू दीज वॉइसलेस एंड हेल्पलेस विक्टिम Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan had organized a conference exclusively for women parliamentarians last week. The government says it is trying to create a consensus on the women's reservation bill. Pranav Goswami's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now, the Rajya Sabha also held a discussion during zero hour to mark International Women's Day. Members raised the issue of 33% reservation for women in one voice. The upper house of parliament had made special arrangements allowing only women MPs to speak at the start of the day. all of them spoke in one voice as they said that the empowerment of women should not only happen on paper but also on the ground for this they said uh, it was important that the women's reservation bill be passed in lok sabha the power which is today with me is because i'm holding a position the power which i had as a deputy chairman it was because i was a deputy chairman and everybody all men and women had to listen to me but all my men friend i say if your wife or your mother or your daughter if her opinion is taken seriously in your house in the society that day i will feel all women are empowered mere bhai baithe hue inse main nivedan karti hu ki is divas ko keval ek उसकी तरह औपचारिकता की तरह ना मनाकर ना इसका उल्लेख करके इन्हें अपने अपने कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसीज में अपने घर से शुरू करना चाहिए द कमामेशन एंड सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ दिस डे विल बी इन इट्स ट्रू सेंस ओनली इफ यू लेजिस्लेट थर्टी थ्री परसेंट रिजर्वेशन टू वेमन इन द पार्लियामेंट एंड स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर टिल दैट द लाउड वॉइस इज द एको वेर एवर it will be only to lip sympathy so if there are parties there are representatives who feel that there is a defect in the women's empowerment bill let's have it let's have a discussion why is this one issue only kept aside as a touch me not no discussion no amendment no passing the prime minister narendra modi today saluted women for their accomplishments and expressed his government's unwavering commitment to their welfare The Prime Minister took to Twitter to applaud the work done by women uh, by uh, while uh, calling their role indispensable. He also reiterated that the government will devote its energies to schemes that improve women's lives like the Beti Bachao Beti Padhao scheme. Uh, the Prime Minister said his government's skill development initiatives will empower women further to contribute to India's growth.
Since coming to power two years ago, Prime Minister Modi has spoken publicly about the importance of the girl child, the need to stop female feticide and improve women's education. In an address to the Convention of Female Legislators last week, he repeated many of these themes, asking women to use technology to become more effective. The Indian Air Force will have its first batch of female fighter pilots from June this year. The batch will have three women training officers who volunteer to be inducted in a combat role. Last month, the Defence Minister Manohar Parikar had informed that women will be inducted to the fighter stream in a phased manner. The proposal for bringing women to fighting roles was cleared last October. It uh, approved plans for women pilots to fly warplanes from June 2017 on a three-year experimental basis. Currently, 1,500 women are serving in the Indian Air Force. They include 94 pilots and 14 navigators. Female pilots and navigators have so far been confined to non-combat roles like transport and helicopter units. For the contribution that you make to the service of the humankind. Three uh, women trainees have volunteered to join the fighter stream. They are under training, the second phase of their training. Once they complete the training, they are doing reasonably well at par with their male colleagues. And the passing out parade is scheduled on 18th of June. As far as future is concerned, as of now, we are in a very, very basic stage of training. So in future, any fighter aircraft for that matter, whatever the institution wants us to go for, whatever is the requirement, I would love to fly any of the aircrafts in the fighter fleets. Presently, uh, we fly, we study ground subjects as well as flying, and uh, it is similar to uh, our male counterparts. Ke hai. Right now, we are flying Kirans. In our stage, previous stage, we have been flown uh, Platus. So, uh, then stage 3 will be in Hawk. Thereafter, uh, according to our performance on the stage 3, that is on the Hawks, they will uh, send us to the squadron. The mega cultural festival organized by the Art of Living Foundation on the banks of the river Yamuna appears to be on shaky ground. The Delhi government told the National Green Tribunal in a hearing on Tuesday that no police or fire safety clearance had been given for the event. The NGT in turn has asked the government how the event was cleared in the first place. The National Green Tribunal on Tuesday heard a petition seeking cancellation of the three day World Culture Festival. Saying it will continue to hear the plea on Wednesday as well, the NGT has questioned the Environment Ministry why no environmental clearance was needed for constructing temporary structures on Yamuna Plains. This even as work on the Yamuna floodplains continues in full swing. खासकर जहां पे स्टेज बनेगा जहां से लोग आएंगे जाएंगे ये सारा का सारा 25 साल का फ्लड प्लेन की जो लाइन है फ्लड की जो लाइन है उसके अंदर आ रहा है तो वहां तो किसी भी तरह की टेंपरेरी या परमानेंट स्ट्रक्चर बनाने की और कोई एक्टिविटी नहीं की जा सकती the environmentalists argue that the festival will severely damage the already delicate ecosystem of the river and cause irreversible damage to the flood plains the organizer, the Art of Living Foundation, however, counters that it is following rules and will ensure that the event does not do extensive damage to the river. पर्यावरण को हम दोषित नहीं करेंगे। मैं आपसे फिर से कहूँगा हमने एक पेड़ भी नहीं काटे हुए। पर्यावरण के लिए बहुत ही हमदर्द रखने वाले हैं और हम चाहते हैं हम सब लोग मिलके जमना जी को ऐसा करें जहाँ लोग चल सकें, बदबू ना आए उधर। the government has also come in for criticism after the Indian Army was roped in to make a temporary pontoon bridge for the event. The Defence Ministry says the decision was taken to ensure there is no security threat to those attending the event. The festival, which opens on Friday, is expected to draw 3.5 million people to the banks of the river. The festival site is spread over 1,000 acres and 35 lakh people are estimated to attend it. President Pranam Mukherjee, who had earlier agreed to attend the opening along with the Prime Minister, has conveyed he will not be present. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Foreign Minister of Saudi Arabia, Adil bin Ahmad Al Jaber, who is on a two day visit to India, met Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. The Prime Minister conveyed that India attached a high importance to maintaining close relations with Saudi Arabia. Both leaders expressed exchange views on furthering uh, uh, bilateral relations. They also held discussions on the regional situation.
Modi expressed confidence that his forthcoming visit to Saudi Arabia will, provide benef will prove beneficial for elevating the bilateral strategic partnership to a new level. Time now to take a look at what else has been making news around the country nationwide. In its mouthpiece, Samna, the Shiv Sena today accused the BJP of providing free publicity to genius student leader Kanaya Kumar, who was charged with sedition and released on bail last week. The article said the centre, by its handling, had given unwarranted space to Kanaya Kumar in the genius controversy. The CBI today rejected Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's claim that it did not follow proper procedure in summoning his officials. The CBI claimed that Kejriwal himself had approved the questioning of personal staff of his principal secretary, Rajendra Kumar, in a written correspondence. Passengers on the Barmer Kalka Express had to manually push the train after its engine failed on the tracks near Barmer district in Rajasthan. The train was then detached and divided into two. One was diverted to the nearby railway yard and the other was pushed to another track to clear the route. Passengers had to wait at the Barmer station for four hours to resume their journey. Time for us to take a short break. That's lots more on the other side. Do stay tuned. One of the greatest exponents of Carnatic music, MS Subalakshmi or MS to her fans. An icon even to a younger generation brought up on fusion and rock music. MS is the first musician ever to be awarded the Bharat Ratna, also the first Indian musician to receive the Raymond Magsaysay Award. As India's cultural ambassador, she also performed at the UN General Assembly in 1966. Former Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru once said of MS, Who am I, a mere Prime Minister, before a Queen, a Queen of Music? Welcome back. You're watching the news tonight. Now, China has asserted that it will not honor the outcome of the UN tribunal in the South China Sea, terming the UN's arbitration on the territorial dispute in the strategically vital area as tainted. China refused to recognize the case lodged by the Philippines and says all disputes should be re uh, resolved through bilateral talks. When asked whether it was worried about the likelihood of the Philippines winning its petition on its claims on some of the islands in South China Sea, China said it had excluded itself from the arbitration. China reaffirmed its claims on the whole of the South China Sea and made a veiled attack on the U.S. for its backing to the Philippines. Now, migrants aiming to enter Europe have expressed disappointment with the EU-Turkey summit on the migrant crisis. The summit in Brussels ended without any major breakthrough. The European Union has been discussing Turkey's offer to do more to stop illegal migration in return for more aid and accelerated EU membership talks for Ankara. Talks will now resume on the 17th and 18th of March. Most of people here have a hope that they will open the borders, at least for the, those people stuck here in, in, in the border. But uh, finally they said no way to go through these borders. This makes us feel so bad, angry. Stranded migrants left disappointed in a waterlogged refugee camp on the Greece-Macedonia border. Neither did the European Union talks with Turkey resolve their situation, nor did they achieve any breakthrough. Of course, I cannot sleep because it's raining. I wake up, I feel like uh, my tent inside the swimming pool. I have no fevers, uh, pain around my body. And you can see my plants, it's a lot of waters. According to a new proposal that German Chancellor Angela Merkel called as a breakthrough, all irregular migrants arriving in Greece from Turkey will be returned. For each Syrian returned, Turkey wants the European Union to accept a recognized Syrian refugee and offer more funding for integration. Europe leaders say more time is required to agree on final details. They will now aim to seal the deal with Turkey 
at another summit on 17th and 18th of March. Well, I think we do have the basis for a breakthrough, which is the possibility that in future uh, all migrants who arrive in Greece will be returned to Turkey. And I think this is significant, but only if it's fully implemented, and that's what needs to happen next. But that will make a real difference. After the Brussels summit, the European Union chief, Donald Tusk, said days of irregular migration to Europe are over. However, a concrete cure to migrant crisis will take time. Meanwhile, Europe faces its biggest refugee crisis since World War II. Most migrants come via Turkey that is already sheltering more than 2.7 million refugees from the civil war in neighboring Syria. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Some international news now in Global Buzz. Iran test fired several ballistic missiles from silos across the country today, defying recent U.S. sanctions on its missile program. The test happened two months after the United States sanctioned businesses and individuals linked to Iran's missile program. Commander of Iran's aerospace arm said sanctions would not stop the country from developing its ballistic missiles, which it regards as a cornerstone of its uh, conventional deterrent. Bangladesh's top court upheld a death sentence on a leader of uh, jamaat -e islam for killing a freedom fighter during the 1971 War of Independence. The Supreme Court acquitted Mir Qasim Ali, a leader of the jamaat -e islami and uh, three others of three other charges, including another offence that also carried the death penalty. The court, however, upheld the convictions and sentences in six other cases. The White House has confirmed that an airstrike was carried out against an Al-Shabaab training camp in Somalia. The airstrike killed more than 150 fighters. It followed U.S. intelligence on preparations for a large-scale militant attack. The United States military said it had been monitoring the camp for several weeks before the strike and had gathered intelligence, including about an imminent threat posed by the trainees. Local television broadcast images of soldiers and police taking position behind barriers with their weapons poised as they prepare to battle Islamist fighters who had stormed through the Tunisian town of Ben Guerdan uh, near the Libyan border. Government officials and residents said the fighters attacked army and police posts in a raid that killed at least 50 people, including civilians. It was not clear if the attackers crossed over the border. After Turkish authorities seized control of the country's largest newspaper last week, a German-based reporter of Zaman stated that they had started to publish an independent edition. The editor-in-chief of the paper's Germany edition, Suleiman Beg, uh, told reporters in Berlin that they are publishing a Zaman issue which is no longer in cooperation with Zaman in Turkey because it was seized by the state. In sports news now, and Russian tennis star Maria Sharapova was provisionally suspended from the sport after her revelation about failing a drugs test at the Australian Open. The 28-year-old tested positive for meldonium, a substance she said she had been taking for health issues. Sportswear company Nike suspended their contract with a five-time Grand Slam winner. I wanted to let you know that a few days ago I received a letter from the ITF that I had failed a drug test at the Australian Open. I did fail the test and I take full responsibility for it. The Russian tennis star and former world number one dropping a bombshell. The 28-year-old tested positive for meldonium, a substance she's been using since 2006 for health issues. I was given this medicine um, by my doctor for several health issues that I was having back in 2006. I, um, I was getting sick a lot. I was getting the flu every couple of months. Sharapova I, said um, that she had been using the drug under the name of Mildronate. She was unaware that it was on the banned list of the World Anti-Doping Agency till 10 days ago when she got a letter notifying her of the positive test. It's very important for you to understand that for 10 years this medicine was not on WADA's ban list, and I had been legally taking the medicine um, for the past 10 years. But on January 1st, the rules had changed, and meldonium became a prohibited substance, which I had not known. The International Tennis Federation said the five-time Grand Slam champion will be provisionally suspended from 12th of March. The ITF's anti-doping program calls for a four-year suspension, but that ban can be reduced depending on circumstances.
Reactions across the sporting world range from support to anger. I know that with this, I, I face consequences and I've, I don't want to end my career this way and I really hope that I will be given another chance to play this game. Sportswear maker Nike suspended their relationship with Sharapova till the end of the investigation. Forbes put Sharapova at the head of its highest earning female athlete list for the last 11 years. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time now for some more sporting action in Sports Beat. Muzi Muzi Sibanda struck a fluent half century to help Zimbabwe defeat Hong Kong by 14 runs in the opening group encounter of the World T20 in Nagpur. Batting first, Zimbabwe set up a target of 159, but Hong Kong could only manage to score 144. Sri Lankan all-rounder Angela Matthews has been named as captain of the team for the ICC World T20. Matthews replaces the injured, injury ravaged pacer Lasit Malinga, who managed to retain his place in the site. The defending champions will start their campaign on the 17th of March against Group B qualifiers. Real Madrid will look to book their place in the quarterfinals of the Champions League as they take on Roma in the last 16 later tonight. Madrid won the first leg by 2-0 and look in command for a place in the last eight for a sixth consecutive season. Well, that's the news tonight. Good night.